Every small town has its own legend, either a noble face or some kind of horror story. In my town, it was the latter, and that's what I'm going to tell you about. By the way, my name is Haley. When we moved to a new small town, one of the gothic-style houses caught my eye. I thought it just had to be ours. But my folks immediately said no and started looking for other options. However, fate itself told us to move there. The realtor immediately said that the amount of money for it is symbolic because of the urban legend. What legend? They say that centuries ago an entire family was sacrificed here by the locals, and now all generations are paying for their sin to the unburied mother. Her twin daughters were taken from her because the sacrifice was in vain. But that's just a myth. We were skeptical, so we bought it cheap. At my new school, I became popular from the first moment. Hey, do you live in that house down the street? People would ask me. I proudly answered yes, but I had no idea what horrors it held at the time. Haley Line, hello, I'm your classmate, Mark. You are late on your first day, Mark said as soon as I took a step into the classroom. Three seconds, just three seconds. I tried to justify myself somehow. Like rule number three says, no tardiness. The teacher stood up from her chair. I looked around, and I saw the frozen terror in the eyes of my new classmates. The smallest boy at the back of the class had his hands over his face, and I knew I had done something terribly wrong. But what? The teacher came closer to me and said, You're new here, waiting for some bling? There ain't gonna be one pretty lady. Take two volumes of the encyclopedia from your locker and put them in your purse, she said sternly. I decided not to argue with her this time and did as she told me. After a moment, Miss Baker said to me, No, take your purse with your teeth. What? What did you hear me say? It was weird and delirious, and I said to her, Are you kidding me? Is this a joke? And she hit the blackboard sharply with her stick. Only then did I notice that it was all dented up. Those marks indicated that she hit it often. I swallowed and then I grabbed the purse with my teeth. It was so heavy, like I'd grabbed an elephant and tried to hold on to it. Is it heavy? You will answer for your rotten tongue. Let this weight be your punishment for saying too much. If you think I nodded and sat down in my seat, oh no, I never sat down for that lesson. Every time the bag fell and my drool ran down, Miss Baker would come over to me and put another book in there, and then, with a satisfied face, she'd sit back down. I came out of there with a painful jaw. That little guy from the back desk, Mark, came up to me almost immediately. Are, are you okay? How dare she? This is bullying. I'll sue her. Yes, I'm afraid so, but there is nothing you can do. Just stick to her rules. She's got about 898 of them. What? Yeah, I counted. And you've learnt them all? What do I do if you don't want to be punished? And you hold your bags in your teeth all the time. I'm afraid that's the easiest punishment. But you can't do that. Should we report her? You don't think any of us have tried? Just deal with it. I don't know what pissed me off more. The lawlessness and the fact that she couldn't be dealt with, or my classmates being so weak. But one thing I knew for sure was, they've got the wrong girl. Then my mother called me and told me that there was no light at home. The old wiring was getting worn out, and I decided to take a little walk and find out a little more about Miss Baker. I went to the principal's office. I eloquently and at length resented today's punishment, but the principal barely even looked up. Okay, we'll figure it out, he said and walked me out. I walked past Baker's classroom and saw three students standing in front of the class eating greasy burgers in full view of everyone. She was punishing them for not having time to spit out their gum before class started. One of the boys threw up on the floor and she made him eat it. Can you imagine? I almost threw up myself. I ran into the class and just as the poor boy was about to touch it with his tongue, Ew! Stop! I shouted bravely and picked him up. You're crazy in the head. I've got this all on camera and I'm going to sue you, okay? Honestly, I was expecting some kind of support from the class, but no way. All the kids crammed into their seats and said quietly, Now we're screwed. Miss Baker walked through with a stone face and closed the door behind me. Fear froze my veins. She stood in front of the class and said, 
kids, and now you're all grounded, thanks to this girl, Haley. Remember her face, because I'm grounding you for a week. Rule number 546, get it out. The kids got up in sync from their desks and pulled out napkins and scissors from their lockers. My goodness, I thought. What is she going to make them do? Miss Baker began with a boy I'd saved. He sat down on his knees and held out his hand, and she slowly clipped the nails on his hands. Only she did it with a special thrill, all the way down to his skin. I saw that red stuff flowing out of his fingers in a shallow stream. Everyone else was trembling, and he was biting his lips to keep from screaming. The horror! It's a nightmare! You're sick in the head! I ran toward the door, but she gave a command, and the class jumped me, not letting me escape. They were piling on top of me. I couldn't breathe under their weight anymore. And Baker pulled out some kind of solution from the medicine cabinet. This is for you. You know what? It's hydrogen peroxide, kind of harmless stuff. But if you take a high percentage, it can burn your throat. Just the way your tongue is boring me. And no matter what you tell me, your parents, the police, the court, you won't get anything. Because this town is on my side, she said and came closer to me. The guy stretched me out on the floor and held me down by my arms and legs. Someone clamped my nose. I resisted, but she squeezed my jaw to get that liquid in there. Ah! I yelled. Fire! Fire! And at that second, one of the teachers broke into the classroom. While Baker was distracted, I managed to rise and press the fire alarm and mingle with the crowd in the hallway. I ran out of the school and couldn't come to my senses. Why had she gone unpunished? Why doesn't anyone say anything to her? She's making fun of everyone. I ran home to tell my mother, but the house was empty, and the lights hadn't been fixed yet. I ran into my room and lay down on my bed. I was scared. I looked at my room, lying there. My eyes were already closed with helplessness, and reality mixed with illusion. For the first time, I looked at my wallpaper, it was white, but if I looked closely, there were drawings, like puzzles with images of different kinds of punishment, and among them I saw scissors, nails, teeth. Right? They were depicted on the cover of the encyclopedias which I'd held in my mouth. It was so strange and creepy, but I no longer had the strength to resist. I fell asleep from the powerlessness and woke up to someone stroking my hair. Oh yes, Mom! I needed that caress so badly. I didn't even realize right away, but was this a dream? What if all that horror was just a bad dream? Are you awake, Haley? Rule number one says, came a voice that sent shivers through my body. I got up out of bed abruptly and saw Miss Baker sitting next to me. What are you doing here? How did you know where I lived? It was easy to do, honey. We're a small town, and as I said... Everybody here respects me, fears me, and you will too. What do you want from me? Obedience. You should listen to me. What makes you think that? You live in this town. What's more, you live in my house. What? Your house? What did you think? Your parents didn't tell you? Oh, that's right. Didn't you notice that your mother and father aren't here? What did you do to them? Answer me! Baker got up from my bed, stroked the wallpaper on the wall, and said that she and her family used to own this house. Her kids went to the same school where she works now, and they were happy, until her family was made scapegoats. Yes, I thought. Now she's an angry lunatic who's been abandoned by her family. The teacher wanted to continue her speech, but the doorbell rang. Mom! It's Mom! I yelled. Baker told me to sit down and went out to open the door. Behind her stood Mark. Mark, get out of here! Call for help! But he didn't make it. Baker grabbed him by the collar and dragged him into the house. He looked at me, then pulled a container out of his bag and handed it to her. She told him to sit on the floor and wait. The teacher came up to me and said, Did you think he was worried about you? Haley, everyone in this town serves me alone. Don't you get it yet? Where are my parents, you witch? They're already far away. Ask Mark what happened to his family. Rule number 16 says you can't communicate with your family or they'll suffer the same fate as Miss Baker's family. Bullshit! I ran out into the kitchen and grabbed my phone and called 911. 
told them I needed help, that there was a fire in the house. I grabbed a knife, then I ran into my parents' bedroom and hid under the bed. I heard her footsteps. She was coming up the stairs and trying to open the door. She was screaming in an inhuman voice. I cried and covered my ears with my hands. Go away! I yelled, and then some firemen knocked on the window. I opened the window and told them that I was being hunted. They promised to help me and open the door, behind which was Baker's desk. I was hiding behind it, and the firemen suddenly pushed me in her direction. She's all yours, ma'am, and climbed out the window. What? What's going on here? Help me! I'm the one whose family was sacrificed to the devil by the locals, and now they're paying me back with the sacrifices of their children. Because otherwise, I will take everything they have. That's impossible. You're supposed to be dead. As you see, I am not. I want your soul. It was as if I had succumbed to a hypnosis or something. I no longer had the strength to resist her. Deep down inside, I was screaming, No, Haley, get out of here! But my body wouldn't listen. I had to go through all her punishments. The door behind her closed on its own. Baker pulled a snake out of the container and released it in my direction. What happened next? Two more newcomers arrived at our school. Baker called my name, and I stood up and said, As rule number three says, no tardiness.